Hello, everybody. I hope you're all doing great. Now, today, we're going to look at the basic rules in assigning oxidation number or oxidation state to different atoms. Now, first and foremost, let us look at what is oxidation state. Now, oxidation state refers to the total number of electrons that were lost or gained by an atom in forming a molecule. Now, please remember this. Whenever atoms lose electrons, they become positive. When atoms gain electrons, they become negative. Now, let's jump into the rules. One of the first we're going to look at is this. Is that elements in their pure or uncombined state have an oxidation state or number of zero. Some examples of elements in their pure state include sodium, calcium, oxygen, and even aluminum. And the list continues. There's a reason behind this. The reason behind this is that there are equal number of protons to electrons. In other words, there are equal number of positive particles as to there are negative particles. Hence, they will cancel out each other and hence the total charge on the pure element is zero. Better yet, for you to understand this, in the simplest, simplest possible form, is that no electrons were gained or lost. So if the pure element did not lose or gain any electrons, then there is no oxidation state. Because remember, oxidation state is when you either gain or you lose electrons. All right, let's jump into rule number two. The second rule we're going to look at is this. Is that the total oxidation state of atoms in a compound is zero. And we're talking about neutral compounds. And so an example here is sodium carbonate. The total charge on sodium carbonate is zero. Why is this so? A compound was formed. That means electrons were transferred or even shared, right? So even though electrons were being transferred, the total number of protons is the same as, it, as there are number of electrons. The total compound still contain the protons and the electrons from the original elements. So together, the total charge is zero. Let's look at another rule. In this third rule, it said that elements of group one and group two are assigned positive and positive one and positive two respectively. So therefore, group one elements, they are always positive one. Group two, they are positive two. Now, examples. Sodium is from group one, so it's a positive one. Calcium is from group two, so therefore it has a positive two. What is the rationale behind this? For them to always be positive one and positive two, respectively. Simply put, they are electropositive and will lose electrons to form cations. So group one and group two will always form cations. Next rule. In this rule, it said the total oxidation state of all the atoms in an ion, either monatomic or polyatomic ion, is equivalent to the charge on that ion. Now, taking for example, the ammonium ion, which is NH4+, that means the total charge on this ion is positive 1. For the sulfate ion, a negative 2. For the phosphate ion, a negative 3. Let's jump into another rule. This one states that the oxidation state of fluorine in any compound is always negative 1. This is cool. And why is this so? But let's look at some examples of compounds that contain fluorine. And so CA4, for example, which is carbon tetrafluoride, 
or we have sodium fluoride. Now, the reason for this, why fluorine is always negative one, is simply because fluorine is the most electronegative element and will always gain an electron. So since it is the most electronegative, no matter what, it will always pull electrons towards it. Now let's look at the other rule. The other rule here that we're going to look at is that the oxidation state of hydrogen is usually a positive one, except in metal hydride, when it is negative one. So some examples here, we have hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid, which is a positive one. In this case, hydrogen is positive one. We also have lithium hydride, which is an hydride in this case, a metal hydride. It is negative one. And so the reason behind this is that hydrogen is more electronegative when it is in a metal hydride. But otherwise, it will be a positive one. Let's look at this other rule. And this rule here is saying that the oxidation state of oxygen in compounds is usually negative to except when in peroxides, for example, hydrogen peroxide, it is negative one, or when it is bonded to fluorine, it is positive two. Now, within this example, I want to point out something here, right? So oxygen is going to be positive to here when it bonded to fluorine because remember, fluorine is the most electronegative element. And therefore, in any case, chlorine has to be negative. So in this case, now oxygen becomes what? Positive. All right, and so here going to end now, I'm going to say to you that I truly appreciate you watching these lessons. And I want to tell you this, the more you give, the more positive you become. Just like element, give away the negatives, give away the electrons, you will become positive. Have a blessed and safe day.